We've got two sunspots, a solar flare, and two solar storms. Looks like our solar minimum sun is on a roll. Those stories and more in the shorty this week. Just when we thought things were going to start quieting down, our sleepy sun keeps it interesting. We now have two bright regions on the Earth-facing sun right now. Region 2718 just crossed central part of the sun and fires off a solar flare. It also launches a solar storm. Now, this solar storm is going to go south of us, so it's, we don't think it's quite Earth-directed, but we might see a little something. But what's more is that it actually destabilizes this big filament here that then lifts off in two different parts and part of it is definitely earth directed now nasa did a prediction model run and it looks like this solar storm is going to be hitting earth around midday on the 25th so we definitely have that to look forward to it's probably going to be a little bit of a weak storm but it might actually bring aurora to high latitudes now you amateur radio operators you may not like the news about the solar storm but at least we do have region 2719 and between these two bright regions, they are actually boosting the solar flux up just a little bit. We're still hovering at poor, but it's at the top end of poor, which I guess is good for solar minimum, and looks like this is going to continue probably for the next three or four days, and then we have yet another bright region on the backside. Switching to your solar storm conditions and aurora possibilities over the coming week, we are anticipating the hit from that solar storm that's Earth-directed. Now, this one's going to be a little bit complicated to predict. We're, we're not expecting a super strong storm, but remember, there are two of them. There's one that went south of us, and then there's the one that's coming that's Earth-directed. So at high latitudes, Noah's expecting uh, active conditions, but he's they're giving us about a 45% chance of a major storm. Now, at mid-latitudes, we're only expecting expecting unsettled conditions, but we do have about a 15% chance of a minor storm. So you can see the spread's quite big, and that's what happens sometimes when you get these really complicated events. They're just really hard to predict. Now, we also might begin to see the storming maybe even starting around late on the 24th, and then we'll see something through the 25th and possibly even through the 26th. So this may linger for a little while, which, even though we expect it to be weak, might mean it could be an aurora producer. Switching to your solar flare and particle radiation storm outlook over the coming week, we do have two bright regions on the Earth-facing disk right now. Region 2718 fired off that solar flare and launched a solar storm, and then it kind of died, so it's no longer numbered. Now, region 2719 is still alive and kicking, and so we're watching it for solar flares to see if it actually will flare up too. But right now, everything is in the green. We don't expect any radio blackouts or any big flares from either of these regions. What is nice is that they both are boosting the solar flux just a little bit. It's still in the poor region for uh, radio propagation, but it's at the top end of poor. It's sure a lot better than what it would be if it, this were a spotless sun. But, you know, we're just going to have to deal with it. It's, it is solar minimum after all. Now, that also means that for radiation risk, uh, if you happen to be a frequent flyer, you have to know that the cosmic radiation right now is penetrating a little bit more intensely than it would be at other times during the solar cycle. So if you're a frequent flyer who flies about 800 hours annually and you fly at high latitudes and high altitudes, you are at an elevated risk for radiation dose right now. So please take this into consideration in your flight plans. So the space weather this week continues to be exciting. And as far as our sleepy sun is concerned, well, didn't you get the memo? You're, you're supposed to be hibernating. We have a solar storm that's on its way to Earth that should hit us around midday on the 25th. And with the other storm that is preceding it and some of the stuff that's happening afterwards, we might actually see this thing linger long enough to give us some aurora, at least at high latitudes. So you photographers, keep your batteries charged. Now you amateur radio operators, hey, things don't look too bad right now. We've got two bright regions on the Earth-facing disk, and in another day or two, we're going to have yet another one coming in from the backside. So, you know, it's not as bad as a spotless sun, right? And GPS operators, well, as long as you stay away from the Dawn Dust Terminators and away from Aurora, your reception should look pretty good. I'm Tamitha Scove. Thank you for watching.